Good day all. I hope you all are safe and sound at a home and a places and God bless you all. This will be my seventh lecture which I will be uploading. So far I have received few feedbacks and questions as well which I have managed to answer and resolve your queries. I would request you all to kindly do share your opinions, your questions, whatever doubts you may have. This will help me to club in all the information and all the requests what you have placed to optimize my lecture and share the legacy with you, assimilating all the queries what you have sent it to me. Another, time, another thing what I would like to reiterate when you do so please do not forget to subscribe my YouTube channel by the name of Marine Quest Solutions same videos I'm also uploading on the Facebook Facebook as well coming to the lecture number four and lecture number seven sorry in the lecture number six we had talked about bow and cushioning effect where we did speak about the component of squat involved in that even in the bow cushioning effect today we are going to clarify and simplify the enhanced effect of squat so let's proceed with that the effect of squat in the restricted waters begins. The conditions are when the depth and the draft ratio is 1 by 2. In other words, if your draft is 10 meters and the depth of water is 30 meters. At that point of time, the effect enhances. It can begin from anything between 1.25 to twice <coughs> that is from 1.25 to twice the draft now when we talk about it the factors associated with the squat which actually pronounce the effect of squat are the speed the draft and also something which we do not give importance to is the underwater volume of displacement which also plays a major major role in that coming to that let's start going from the figure one and in figure one you see the red color hull the ship what i've drawn she is presently i've shown this here that there is no speed so you can see the w and l marked in red color red uh, marker but when we increase the speed, what happens? For a vessel with a block coefficient of more than 0 decimal 7, she will start squatting by the bow, as what we can see here, and same thing has been depicted. The effects which are taking place have been also mentioned here in a nutshell. What is happening here, where I've drawn in the blue arrows you have a high velocity of water passing under the hull and low pressure is generated because the water is going with a vessel velocity due to the constriction created under the bow <coughs> now coming to figure number two the same drawing i have superimposed in figure number two where you see those two blue arrows over here and there is also virtual center of buoyancy which is also creating a tipping edge at the bow because when the vessel is tipping at the bow because of the block coefficient and the speed factor the center of buoyancy is also shifting aft which is giving a double effect to the vessel more the speed more the effect of score therefore what we see here 
in the bow part which is here superimposed in this drawing of figure number two. The bow is dipping because of the spot, because of the block coefficient more than 0 0.7. Constricted flow of the water is taking place here which culminates into the high velocity of the water and low pressure. <coughs> of course, when we are going from one density to another, <coughs> there is effect of change in trim as well. The effect of train, uh, change of trim is enhanced because of the change in the position of virtual center of buoyancy. Coming to this <coughs> thing in a more elaborated manner, <coughs> as what I've mentioned here in figure in area as depicted in figure number 2, B, the buoyancy, is giving an up thrust and because of which the bow is tipping, of course, the other factors which culminate into are your draft and the block coefficient. Now, <coughs> We see here, as marked here, there is a virtual decrease in the underwater volume of displacement aft. <coughs> the virtual decrease in the, un de uh, uh, decrease in the underwater volume of displacement aft is also creating the same effect or enhancing the effect. Therefore, the virtual aft, the, the virtual decrease in the underwater volume of displacement aft or extern is enhancing the effect of the squat. Because when a vessel is at even key, the under, underwater volume of displacement is uniform. But once that is when the vessel is static. But the moment the vessel becomes dynamic, the effect of squat starts. Again, it is directly proportional to the speed. Therefore, once the speed increases and with a block coefficient of more than 0.7, the bow tips to the, uh, the bow goes down, the increase in draft takes place at the bow. Likewise, the slight dec uh, decrease in draft takes place at the stern. Now, consider this, that in one place, when the vessel was static, a vessel with an even key, the underwater volume of displacement was even, but the moment she started, the moment she, the, the, the revs were picked up or the speed, speed was picked up, she starts tipping. So the underwater volume of displacement now is not even as compared to when the vessel was static and also on even key. So the same effect I have shown over here. I hope I managed to make you understand this. If not, let me repeat it again. Let's say there's a vessel with 10 meters of even keel draft. She's started. The only time the effect of squat or virtual effect of squat will take place, that is, let's say when she is at anchor and the tide setting is very strong. That means when the vessel is at anchor, she always stems the tide. At that point of time, of course, there will be a squat experienced by the vessel because this is something as what you see the difference between the speed over ground and the log speed. You all guys must have noticed that the vessel when she's either docked or at anchor, you will still see on the log the speed cutting through the water. That speed is nothing but the the quantum of current, what she's stemming at the bow. Similarly, as by what I explained earlier, similarly when the vessel is static and there is no current, taking that perception into account, when she is static at 10 meter draft, she will be even keel without the bow dipping for a vessel with a block coefficient more than 0.7. But the moment she picks up the speed, she'll start tipping by the bow and there will be a virtual change in the aft part of the underwater volume of displacement. Because of that, the center of buoyancy 
will shift. There will be nothing, uh, there will be no change in the center of gravity unless we change the weights on the ship. But there will be certainly change of the center of buoyancy which will start going up, which will again create a fulcrum by virtue of which the more the speed is increased, the more pronounces the effect of squat. Therefore, as I repeat this whole thing again, of course, as I said earlier, I'm going slow and steady so in, to ensure that I do not, you know, uh, overstep something or perhaps forget or ignore any of the aspects. That's the reason I'm taking good 10, 12, 15 odd minutes per lecture in a slow and steady manner. My main idea to come up with this lectures is a kind of a legacy which I'm parting, imparting for the young mariners. As I said earlier, many a things you may not find in the book. So if this part is clear, as I understand, and I'll repeat again, then I will answer the question which I had asked few days earlier, but I have not received any response. Anyhow, to sum up, in restricted waters, the factor of speed, the things which drastically affect or enhance the effect of squat are the speed, of course, draft, but also we cannot take, we cannot ignore the effect of underwater volume of displacement because of the virtual shift of central buoyancy. At the same time, the effect of squat enhances when the depth to draft ratio is two or less. It also makes the difference <coughs> for vessel <coughs> with a block coefficient of less than 0.7, she will squat by stern. So it all varies. But if you have any questions for me to explain you separately for a vessel with the with a block coefficient of less than 0.7 squatting by stern, I'll come back. So what we talked about, the center of buoyancy, the virtual change which has been depicted here, the difference here, the, because of the constricted flow, because of the area which is reduced, the pressure is less and the velocity of water passing through the underwater hull is more. However, at stern it is opposite. It's a high pressure created with a low velocity, which is giving a virtual lift to the vessel at stern because of the shift in the center of buoyancy. The same has been depicted here and the virtual decreased underwater volume of displacement, which is also depicted here. Which gives a tipping edge at the stern and creates a fulcrum. Now, I will answer the question which I asked which are because I did not receive any answer and this particular thing which I'm sharing with you all you will not find in any books. The question which I had asked in one of my previous lectures was on a double double skin vessel with a center sub uh, division especially on a tanker you have wing tanks for the cargo and wing tanks ballast respectively. Probably most of the chief officer, if they have their last vessels alish tables at the back of their mind or if they are watching this channel whilst they are on board, you will find that the starboard side of your tanks, whether it's 100%, 90%, 98% will be of slightly higher capacity on a vessel with a right hand screw. I'm talking about a vessel with a right hand screw. The reason being as what we had studied it, in our good old school days, the physics, I believe most of us are science, uh, science students, physics students. We do recall the banking of curves. When we talk about banking of curves, when a bike is going around the circle, the road is raised a bit and that's known as the banking of curve. Why it is raised? Because of to equalize the centrifugal force which is created by the bike and an equal amount of centripetal force 
which is virtually being experienced from the center of the circle. Likewise, the starboard tanks are of slightly bigger capacity when we add up from 1 to 6 or 1 to 7 as many tanks as what you may have from forward to off, port to starboard, you know, segregating them. The starboard tanks or the weight on the starboard side will be more. Be it a ballast tank or be it a cargo tank, you'll find a similar thing. The reason being on a right hand screw, when the vessel is moving ahead, the bow can't to port. And when you're going astern, the bow obviously can't to starboard. But when you're going ahead, when the bow can't to port, because of the additional weight on the starboard side, if I put additional weight, see the effect what it takes. It is something similar to banking of curve and which shortens the curve, which actually assists in reducing the turning circle. Therefore, on a vessel with the center line subdivision, with the wing tanks, be it cargo or the ballast tanks, you will find this particular thing. And the reason being is to shorten the turning circle. Now, I believe I've also come across lots of books and I've written my own book as well as we speak. And I'm trying to impart the training in small sections with respect to the book, what I have written it all by myself. With your guys feedback, if you like these things, perhaps I may come up and publish the book also. But before that, I'd also like to appraise your guys the approach in which it is written. Many a few lectures I've also imparted the hypothesis also that was to make you all guys understand. Okay, gentlemen, I hope I've been able to do something or explain you in some productive manner. Again, the mantra is stay home, stay safe and be all safe. God bless you. Jai Madhadi. And please do not hesitate to ask me the questions, queries you may have, as well as please do not forget to subscribe my YouTube channel and like under the same banner Marine Quest Solution on the Facebook page. Thank you. Thank you very much.